Thank you, Bob Keys, for finally allowing me to get rid of these comments. Activating your windows with Bob Keys is extremely simple, and with the help of my discount code, you can get up to 25% off of your Windows key. All you need to do is search for your Microsoft Windows 10 Home key, add it to cart, check out, use my coupon code AV25, submit your order with your preferred payment method, and head to your purchase orders to get your code. Copy this code and paste it in the activation settings under the change product key. With this, I was finally freed and ready to start using my dream PC. Before you dive in there, I highly recommend using your power supply box as a grounding unit by using an anti-static strap, connecting the box to a wall socket, turning it on, and attaching the alligator clamp to the grills. I've built over a total of 10 PCs these past few years, and with the help of my new build, well, I thought it would be awesome to show you all how to case swap and upgrade your PC. Thanks to Antic and their awesome P120 crystal, I'm going to swap a few components from my Battlecruiser mid tower to my new mid tower case. So rule number one, make sure you're not downsizing cases and if you are, you need to know for a fact your new components will fit. But for this build, we are talking about an RTX 3080 for the Win3 Ultra Gaming, extra sticks for a total of 64GB of RAM, the C73 cooler from NZXT dissipating heat from the 10980XE on this Asus Strix X299 motherboard and we were finally going to be able to activate Windows. Thank you Bob Keys. I know you all love this case and because of its form factor, I thought it would be the perfect case for a video like this. And so I unplugged my PC, removed all my USB cables and adapters and started to take apart this gorgeous build. But don't worry, if you've never taken a PC apart, it's pretty simple. All you need is to locate all the power connectors, make sure you unplug your motherboard, GPU, front power connectors most likely located at the bottom right of your motherboard, your USB 3.0 along with the HD audio cable and SATA cables by pressing down on the tab and removing it. Move on to the GPU in order to unmount it, remember to push down the tab to release the lock and unscrew it from its slot. And by this point, I recommend removing your radiator cooler or fan if possible on your air cooler. But just make sure you flatten out your case and trace your cooler's cable connected to the motherboard to eventually unplug them. Then you can easily proceed to start unscrewing the radiator but not the head yet. Also, you will most likely have to unplug some fans and head pump cables connected to the case splitters or motherboard. In my case, the RAM will be staying but if you are looking to remove these, all you need is to press down the tabs, hold the stick and get it out. Please do make sure that if you are swapping motherboards and you are running dual RAM sticks, you are aware of the manual's corresponding channel orders to such configuration. And the last power cable you will need to remove after creating some clearance for yourself is the CPU cable. Now proceed by locating your motherboard screws and once everything is loose you can allow yourself to use the head pump and pull the motherboard out of the case. I recommend putting the motherboard on a cardboard and if you currently have an M.2 in place you need to locate the panel hiding it if there is one. So unscrew the panel, unscrew your M.2 mounting screw and gently pull the memory out. Behind your chassis, you can disconnect your SSD power and SATA cable like we did on the motherboard. And at last, you can unmount the power supply's bracket, carefully untangle all your cables including the motherboard 24 pin, the CPU 8 pin, the GPU pins and SATA cables. Don't be afraid of the mess you will encounter in the back of the power supply as these represent the power cables you disconnected at first, but you will have a problem now and that is a dirty CPU. Taking the head pump off will leave thermal paste on the CPU itself. To clean this, you can use a coffee filter and 91% isopropyl alcohol. But before we do so, I recommend lifting up your lever and removing the CPU from its socket. Then you can grab it by the corners and start cleaning all the thermal paste on it. Don't forget to insert it back into the motherboard socket by making sure you are extremely careful with the pins and aligning your arrows to your CPU dot. Don't apply any force when laying it down and if you got two retention arms, they'll be designed so one goes down first and the other one afterwards.
Welcome back home, the P120 Crystal, with one of the sleekest front door panels in the case world and a beautiful interior that will accommodate our NZXT C73 cooler. But wait, now we have to upgrade all our parts and put all of this together. So I inserted the new RAM by making sure the taps were opened, the teeth were aligned with the dim slots and I applied enough pressure for insertion. Attaching the motherboard is the reverse process of what we did, but please do make sure your new case has the standoffs already attached to it to avoid grounding out your motherboard. You can then start routing your cables to connect your front panel cables, your USB 3 connector, your HD audio and USB standard if your case has any. After you spend some time reading the manuals to make sure everything is well connected, you can move on to mounting all your hard drives, connect them with SATA cables and route those cables to the motherboard. Before we connect our cooling solution, it's usually a good idea to connect your 8-pin CPU connector because you will be removing this clearance with most coolers and cases. From here, you can start to plan how to connect your new cooler on a potential new motherboard if that's your case. The NZXT C73 cooler doesn't come with RGB fans, so with the help of Antec, I went ahead and installed our own RGB fans. With P120 Crystal, this was the correct way to install the radiator for a push configuration. And with a big LCD screen on it, we needed to connect all cables before turning it on. It does have pre-applied paste, but I went ahead and I bought some Arctic Silver 5 for better thermals. I connected the head cables, got my thumb nuts, flattened out my case, applied my own thermal paste, and aligned the pump head to screw it all the way in with the thumb nuts. Just don't forget to power up your pump with your SATA connector and parallel connect your radiator fans to the splitter. You can then connect the power pump cable to either CPU fan 1 or the CPU fan 2 sockets and the USB cable that comes with the cooler to the bottom of the board for full software control. And because the P120 Crystal has its own power supply bay on top, it made routing our cables a bit easier when connecting the motherboard 24 pin connector, the CPU 8 pins, your SATA power and all the 8 pins needed to power up your GPU. But the story doesn't end there, it's essential you take the time to properly connect your fans to the case in order to power them, connect the RGB connectors if you have some, and take the time to properly cable manage your PC. And at this point in time, it was one of the most exciting moments because I never thought I would ever own an RTX 3080. To install, all you need to do is unscrew the back plates, open up your slot, and carefully place your GPU within. Don't forget to use the same screws that you took off the plates to remount them using the GPU's bracket and the final step is powering your GPU with the 8 pin connectors. I hope you guys have found this video useful. Let me know in the comment section down below with a hashtag PC Master Race. I'm going to be using my old PC components for a future video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. With this being said, it's time I get back to working on the M1. I will see you guys soon. Take care.